Let's talk all about the media industry. Hi, it's Jen coming at you from Florida. I am an ex-TV news producer who now makes YouTube videos in my craft room. And every once in a while, I get somebody hitting me up on LinkedIn or via email. They're typically in college and they want advice on getting into broadcast journalism, the TV news business, and I worked in the media industry for 15 years. I've also made a lot of other videos about the media industry on one of my other channels, XTV Producer, and I've talked to a lot of fellow XTV newsers about their experience. So don't just get my opinion, get a lot of other opinions if you want to learn just more in general about what the media does. But I wanted to address this further and kind of go a little bit more into my background. So we're going to be touching on a lot of different topics. I will uh, first explain where I worked and what my jobs were. I'll tell you how much I got paid. I will also touch on my opinion of the current state of the media industry and TV news just overall. And I will also be sharing some advice for college students if this is you and you're considering a career in the media industry as a journalist. Timestamps are below if you want to skip ahead to a specific topic. I will make the following disclaimer. I'm just one person. This is my personal experience. Everyone has had a different experience in life and with their career. And I would ask that you be respectful and constructive in the comments. Some or all of what I say you might not like. I'm okay with that and I respect your views as well. But instead of just crapping all over me in the comments, I would encourage you to make your own video about it. Don't just leave somebody a nasty comment. It's really easy to be a keyboard warrior, but it's not as easy to make your own content about a certain topic and put your name and face behind it. This is also not a media bashing video. I still have a lot of friends in this business who I have love and respect for. But that being said, I do believe the industry has a lot of deep problems and flaws that it needs to address if it wants to have a future moving forward. So who am I and what credentials do I have? I am in my late 30s and I worked in the TV news business a little over 15 years from 2003 to late 2017. I have worked in six different local newsrooms. I also worked at CNN for almost five years and I also spent a short amount of time at the Home Shopping Network. Yeah, well, there are plenty of people who have way more experience than I've had in the TV news industry. I do think that I've had a pretty well-rounded career working at a lot of different environments and different types of newsrooms. So I do think my perspective has some value. So that's why I'm sharing it with you now. In college, I did three internships back to back in local newsrooms in West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. And then right after college, I actually had no job. I moved to Texas unemployed, hoping it would work out. Somehow it did, and I ended up getting hired as a morning show producer in El Paso, Texas, making $20,000 a year. I did that between 2004 and 2007. Then I moved here to the Tampa Bay area, and I worked at a 24-hour local cable station for close to four years. My contract at that place was like super long. Just so you know, a lot of TV people are under contract. They are becoming less and less common for off-air people. Typically, you have to work at a station for a certain amount of time. Otherwise, you have some sort of penalty, and you also have a non-compete clause. So once your contract is done at, you know, such and such, station. You can't go across the street to their competitor until six months. Usually it's about a six month non-compete. So that means for a lot of people, once they leave their current station, they have to move to another city because a lot of people don't have six months worth of savings to like ride it out and then get a job at another station. That kind of makes it difficult. And that's why people who work in TV tend to be very nomadic and move a lot. So I moved here to Tampa. And that, this job was different. I was a special projects producer. So that's a lot different than a show producer. The show producer like stacks the show, you know, kind of, you know, I was doing like the 6 a.m. hour or something. Special projects, you're working on like more long-term stuff. Like I was doing segments about like restaurants or, you know, like more like the fluffy stuff, meta, some health stuff, politics. Uh, this job, I booked a lot of celebrity interviews and political interviews, and I did a lot of field producing, which is a really cool thing. And that is where you go out with a reporter and a photographer, and you're the one that's kind of managing like the shoot or whatever story you're covering. So that actually was a pretty interesting experience for me. As we get further into this, I'll talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly about newsroom culture, because uh, it can be kind of toxic. So I did that for almost four years. And then when my contract at this station was up, I 
uh, there were some certain things with management and some other things that I, I was not really down with. So I decided not to renew my contract. I was offered another one, but I turned it down. And at this job, I started out making $40,000 a year, which compared to my 20K salary was like, whoa, I'm in the big leagues, even though that's really not that much money. And then when I left, in the contract every year I would get a raise and that was how it was in El Paso. So in El Paso, I started out making $20,000 a year, ended at 25, I know there's the big bucks there. Then in Tampa, I was started out making 40,000 and then I ended up at about 47,000. Once I left there, I ended up pretty much immediately going to HSN. HSN paid pretty well. The lifestyle and the job was not for me. That paid about 55,000 at the time. This was around 2011. My time at HSN was short, but it was very interesting. The job was super crazy and I ended up leaving for certain reasons that I won't really go into, but my job title there was supervising producer. And what I really did was every time that the show would have certain products that they wanted to put on air, I would work with the, the vendor, whoever was producing that product to craft your TV presentation. I did a lot of random categories. Like I did fitness equipment, coins, luggage, pet products. I also met some celebrities there. I worked with uh, Susan Lucci, which she was really cool. Uh, Samantha Brown and also uh, Lorenzo Borghese. Remember the guy that was The Bachelor? And I had a pretty good experience with, with most of the high profile guests that would come in, you know, selling their products. Then I kind of bounced around a little bit. I, and one thing to know about journalists is that it's a very large part of your identity. Like you really see it as being like just a huge part of who you, who you are. So leaving the business can be kind of hard for a lot of people. I kind of felt a little bit lost around 2011, 2012. Um, I left the business, worked at HSN, did some writing for some like medical newsletter for a while. And then I ended up back in local news. So I ended up working at another station here in Tampa for a little under, like just shy of a year. And I was working as an assignment editor. So that's a lot different. The assignment editor is you're kind of like the air traffic controller of the newsroom. A lot of that job is answering the phone and talking to a lot of crazy and very angry people and reading a lot of really inane emails from like PR and marketing people. So that job, I would say out of all the newsroom jobs, that's one of the most stressful and one of the most thankless jobs. Like nobody gives a shit about the assignment editor. I'm just gonna be honest. They tend to be like used and abused and like, I don't know, I feel, I really feel for everyone out there who is an assignment editor and you know, you just don't, you just do not get the appreciation that you truly deserve. So I did that for a while and then I, I had been talking to a contact at CNN who ended up being my boss later and uh, she ended up helping me get in at CNN. And for a lot of people who work in TV news, they have a dream of working in a network, whether it be like ABC News or CNN or something like that. And I thought it would be a really cool job. So I ended up going to be a news editor at CNN. Uh, we ended up moving from Florida to Atlanta. And then I worked at CNN uh, from 2012 to 2017. I will say there is a large difference between like local newsrooms and network newsrooms. You really can't lump them into the same category. They're just very different environments, very different workflow. There's some similarities, but there's like far more difference, differences. So my job at CNN was uh, basically to every day kind of cover a lot of local stories and surface stories that the network could use. I would monitor, I would be assigned like a certain region. So like the country would be broken down into like different regions like Northeast, Southeast. And then within that region, you're assigned different states. So every day I would have to monitor stations within my territory and see if they were working on anything interesting, obviously covering a lot of breaking or spot news and just working with these stations on day-to-day -day coverage. Something you might not know is CNN has a very large affiliate network. So t other TV networks like international networks and local stations, they actually pay money to CNN to be part of the uh, new source affiliate. And then how that works is that you share contents. CNN would share like network stuff with all the affiliates and then all of the local stations would share their video and information with CNN as well. So that's how you see all these networks get video from like, you know, the middle of Montana. like. You know, CNN's not going usually to shoot that video. They're usually asking an affiliate in Montana to get that tape and share it with them. And then CNN also shares a local station's video with other 
stations around the country. So that's how you're, when you're watching the news, that's how like a station in Florida gets video from a station in California. There's a lot of sharing going on. I will say this job, overall was certainly the cushiest. There's some good and there's some bad with working at CNN like any place. I was making the most money I've made in news. I started out making about a 65,000 a year. And then when I left in 2017, I was making with my bonus about $75,000 a year. The benefits at CNN were amazing. We got a lot of vacation time. And what I liked about that job is that I've had other jobs in news where you are like never off the clock. Even after you've gone home for the day, you're still expected to answer emails. You still have to do stuff. You have to answer phone calls when your manager calls, you know, answer the phone when your manager calls. At CNN, one thing that I think was they had a better, I think, work-life balance overall, for at least for my job. I'm sure not all jobs there are like this, but with what I did, it was very shift-oriented. So when you got off, you were truly off. Nobody really bothered you. I got very few calls. Like the whole almost five years I was there, people would generally leave you alone when you were not working. That also made your vacation time a lot more peaceful because you didn't have to deal with having to like work while you were off. And I think that's one thing that I will say is really was really great for me personally personally about working at CNN. I think they, they had a pretty good thing going in that regard. And uh, that's something that I'm, I'm truly grateful for. Another thing I really liked about CNN is they were very okay with me having a YouTube channel at the time. I started it around 2016 and I talked to my manager about it and they were totally cool with it. It's obviously, as long as I didn't mention at the time, a lot of corporations have this policy. You can't really mention where you work or talk about it publicly. So that's something, but as long as it didn't have to do with news or CNN, you know, they were totally fine with me having a YouTube channel. And that's what eventually led me to, to quitting CNN because it was starting to gain some traction. And that's what I do right now. Okay, so now you know a little bit of my backstory. Let's talk about what it's like to work in a TV newsroom. There is some good, there's some bad, there's some really ugly, and I've had a lot of varied experiences in the 15 years I was in the business. And overall, there is a lot more bad. I'll, I'll just be upfront about that. There is some positives. I wouldn't say I like have a ton of regrets about being in the business at the time I was. If I was 18 to 22 right now, this is not a business I would consider a future career in. Okay, so let's start off with the good. I would say some of the good things about working in the media industry is that I've met some really amazing people over the years I was working in it, from fellow coworkers to people you meet on stories. I've gotten the opportunity to meet a lot of celebrities and politicians. So up close, I've gotten some, some interactions with people that most people don't ever get a chance to. And I fully realized that's certainly a privilege and that's something that I, I, you know, I look back on and I think, you know, that was, that was pretty cool to be a part of. I've gotten a lot of experience and access to things that a lot of people would never get to do. One celebrity encounter that sticks out in my mind is when I was working at one of the station, local stations here, I was booking a lot of weekend morning show guests. Robert Hershevec, you know, the guy from Shark Tank with the good hair. I booked him to come on and promote uh, the show because, you know, I was working at an ABC station and he was also promoting some of the companies he had invested for. You know, with celebrities, you never know whether they're gonna be cool or they're gonna be a total ass. You really don't know. And I found with celebrities, the more of an entourage they have, like basically they roll up with like 10 people. The more of that going on they have, the more out of touch with reality they typically are and like the least friendly they tend to be. For the most part, there are some exceptions, but Robert Hershevec showed up by himself, like no assistant, no, you know, publicist. And he was like the coolest guy ever. I gotta say, like I have a really fond memory of just, you know, chatting with him, making small talk, getting him some really crappy coffee from the break room. He was just super engaged, very nice. He was asking about like, you know, what we do there and, you know, what what you, what kind of stories we're covering. Um, th this was a guy that really has a lot of people skills and I really enjoyed meeting that guy. Um, also, another celebrity that you wouldn't really expect to be super friendly and warm was Chris Angel, you know, like that like magician guy. He was like unexpectedly so kind to everybody in our crew and he was cool. LL Cool J, super nice. So 
I've gotten to meet some celebrities and you just get a different, I don't know, they're just really unique experiences. And I, I really treasure those, those moments. And you know, we've, I've gotten to go on some trips with colleagues. Uh, we went to Disney World for a few days. Although I will say going to Disney World were, as a working journalist is much different than going as a tourist. And I would not say it felt anything like a vacation. Another good thing about working in a newsroom is I think you really learn to work very fast. That's something you kind of have to do. And I think on a professional level, that's a, a really big skill. And that is a very transferable thing to take to other industries. Um, when you're working on deadline and you have to do a show every day, you really grind it out. Like I've you know, just, I have a very high productivity level and, uh, you know, just over time, you just really get things, you just really know how to knock things out because you know that you got to be prepared for what else is coming because sometimes you might get your, your whole show done as a producer and then something else happens and then you have to dump that all out and just start over again. So that's another thing about working in news is that every day is pretty unpredictable. It's, I wouldn't say it's boring at all. Very, very high octane, fast paced environment. Every day is different than the next. You never know what you're gonna be doing. I have covered some of the craziest stories ever and it really kind of makes you see how much how much weirdness there's in the world. There's a lot of good too. There's a lot of crazy. There's a lot of uh, very sad and tragic stories. Uh, some things that you just will never understand. So it really gives you an interesting perspective about the world. Because the work is so intense, you do develop very close bonds with the other people in the newsroom. You know, you're working in such close proximity, really long hours, and it's just very intense that you really can't help but become close to the people around you. There are a lot of newsroom relationships. A lot of people end up getting married that met, meet at work. I did not go that route myself, but I saw it happen all around me. And there are a lot of couples that develop or just best friends who develop because they were working together in a newsroom. Let's get to the bad because there is a lot to unpack here as well. Newsrooms can also be very toxic places to work for a variety of reasons. Now, I have spent a lot of time in seven different newsrooms, and I would say there's not one in my mind that sticks out as being great. Like, they all had a lot of problems. You, know, you kind of just took the good with the bad. You know the saying, like, you know, the better to have the devil you know than the devil you don't. That is very true with TV newsrooms. They're very stressful places to work. Like, they can be very exciting, but it's also, like, just beyond stressful. I would say working in a newsroom environment is probably not for most people, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Like, there's not a lot of work-life balance. CNN was certainly a rarity and that's something I greatly appreciated, but most newsrooms, like they really expect you to just give your whole soul to the station. You know, I don't see there being anything wrong with being dedicated to what you do and expecting a lot from people. But at the same time, I saw a lot of people and I've experienced this myself just kind of getting used and abused by station management just because they could. Now this is a business and I know some other colleagues have mentioned this in the past, just, you know, when we were talking is that you know, a lot of people want to be on TV. So that's how stations can get away with paying someone like $25,000 a year because they know someone's going to want that job because they want to, it's kind of a vanity industry. They want to be on TV. They want to start out at market 150 and work their way up to network. And I think this can be a little bit predatory, especially for young people. You're going into an industry where you're making, they really do not pay you anything. And because their salary often, I, I do feel like sometimes the stations can get around things like over overtime rules. So if you are working at a station and you're starting out, um, going hourly may not be a bad way to go just because at least then if you're working over 40 hours a week, you're getting paid for that time because I have worked many, many hours, many hours of overtime with zero extra pay, even at the 20 to $25,000 uh, job. And I'll get into that more because there were some certain reasons. Stations tend to be really understaffed, like Pretty much every station I've been at has been under understaffed for certain reasons. Like they'll be like, yeah, we're in the process of hiring new producers or new desk people. But you know, then they kind of, the management will kind of sit on their hands and not hire someone for six months. And then in that meantime, the other people that are still there end up having to fill in that gap. And I don't think that's fair to the employees based on a decision management makes or lack of taking any action that really is how you burn people out and just make them go crazy. And I certainly 
have been on the brunt end of that. Uh, there was one job I had where two, I w this was the desk job. I, uh, two people had left in my department with the same job I had. We were stretched so thin. My schedule at the time was insane. Like I was working two days from like 3.30 to 11.30 a.m. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was working 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then Saturdays and Sundays, I was working 5.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And now that's gonna really mess up your sleep cycle. And I was, I just felt like a zombie the whole time I was doing that. And that's actually why I was very grateful to, to leave and go to CNN. Things like that happen super common in newsrooms. And I'm sure they happen in a lot of other, other industries as well. But that type of treatment of employees is just, it can be really damaging to them physically, mentally and emotionally and I don't I don't think that's cool. Uh, I think there's a lot of improvements that newsrooms could make to take better care of the employees uh, but as I will talk about later uh, newsrooms financially may not be doing super great so that's one of the again another huge problem and crack in the industry. I've had some okay managers. I've had way more managers that were completely terrible. There's a lot of people in newsroom management that just they don't really do much and you know they don't really help make your the employees life easier. They kind of just do whatever they're going to do. I had one manager who uh, threatened me. Uh, they pulled me into an edit bay alone and they threatened to ruin my reputation. So that was great. And I've had other managers who, you know, when you would bring up valid concerns or try to tell them how to make something better, they would just ignore you. That happens a lot too. And as far as like my peers and the other people around me, there are some really great people who work in TV news and, and are journalists. There are also a lot of morons who work in newsrooms too. So there's definitely a very wide range of people in terms of uh, attitude, competency, you know, ability. And unfortunately, I do think that when a manager hires a bad employee, I don't blame the employee, I blame the manager for one. My husband has a saying, there are no bad employees, there are only bad managers. Because if, you're, if you are in newsroom management, you're responsible for making sure that the newsroom uh, runs runs well. And a lot of, most newsrooms I've been in just did not run very well. So that was, that's my own personal experience. You may have had, a, if you're working in TV news, you may have had newsrooms you love. I've obviously not worked in, you know, every newsroom in the country or anything, but I've worked in enough and I definitely seen a pattern that most are, they, there's certainly a lot of room for improvement. Let me just say that. At least in, in my own experiences, uh, there's not a lot of accountability for underperformers in a newsroom. So I've worked in plenty of situations where I, I had to end up picking up the workload or babysitting employees who really were not cut out for the job, could not perform the job, and you know, or just were just completely unwilling to work. So I've, I've definitely had that uh, as an experience. And then you know, the managers, they don't really want to do anything about it. Like sometimes it seems like it's kind of hard to get fired from a TV job unless you do something really heinous. And every station I've been at and network, there's always people working there where the other employees are like, how do they still have a job there? Like they don't do anything or they're like totally incompetent or really lazy. You know, it's kind of a mystery as to how they stay employed. Like there are people like that in every, I'm sure every organization even outside of news, but that's just something that, you know, I found very problematic. I don't think you should be penalized for being a top performer at an organization. I think you should be rewarded. Just from all the jobs I've had, it seems like if you're a, a good worker and you know what you're doing, you often get penalized with having to pick up the slack for your colleagues or working the really crappy shifts because they don't trust the other people in those roles. So I, I think that's kind of messed up. If you are great at what you do, I think you should be rewarded with, you know, a better shift or, you know, obviously more money, but instead they kind of do the opposite. And I, I do think that's why a lot of people end up leaving the station that or leaving the business altogether is just because they don't feel like their work is valued. They don't feel like they're valued as an employee. And I, I think that's a real problem in TV news. Another big issue in newsrooms is the lack and declining resources. And what I'm talking about here is, is things like TV crews, reporters being asked to one man band, or just giving more and more workload. Like some newsrooms will eliminate jobs and just spread out the workload among the existing employees. So their workload will just keep getting greater and greater for no more money. But I really do think that the one man band requirement for even like, so here's how it works. Your standard news crew is a reporter and a photographer. So 
The reporter, you know, will set up the story, they'll write the story. They often have to make a lot of phone calls and do legwork on whatever they're working for. Uh, the photographer, again, these people are also very underappreciated. They obviously shoot the story, they do the editing. They also do the driving around in the news car or the live truck. They have to have a lot of technical skills because they have to run cables, set up the live shot, you know, tune in the satellite or the microwave shot. And that job is very, very intense. Many newsrooms are, they're trying to, you know, make do with less and, and create more stuff with less resources. So they will ask reporters or they'll have the photographer do it, basically do all of those things, but just one person instead of two. Obviously setting up the live shot still requires two people, but if the reporter is just turning a package and there's no live shot in many markets, not even just smaller markets, they will be asked to shoot and edit their story. And that I think is a detriment to journalism because that's leaving them less time to do the actual story. They also do all the driving then, so time they might be spending, you know, fact-checking, being on the phone, is now being eaten up with the photographer editor duties. It was kind of well known that this was something you would do in like your first job. Like if you're in market 200, you're probably going to one-man band, but if you're in market like, you know, 10 or 12, like I think Tampa is like, I think 12 to 14, something like that now. Typically by that, you know, once you made it to like the big leagues, like top 50 market, you know, it, it used to be a thing where reporters knew that they wouldn't really have to one man band anymore. But now that is not the case. People in any market are being required to shoot. And I do think that the skill of shooting and editing is something that more employees need to have, on air talent included. But I think cutting corners on stuff like that can lead to a lower quality product, which is uh, the stories you see on television. Not to mention that there are a lot of shots that are impossible to get if you are one man banding. Like say the suspect perp walk with the reporter trying to ask a question, you know, stuff like that is out and you are a lot more limited with the photography when you don't have an actual photographer. This should be obvious, right? My next negative about working at a TV station is the schedule. Your schedule is probably gonna suck like for a very long time. If you are lucky enough to get like that nine to six schedule or eight to four schedule, with no weekends, that's like hitting the lottery in TV terms because I don't, I don't think I've ever had a TV job where I didn't work weekends or overnights for some period of time. I worked overnights for th about three years and I also have worked weekends in pretty much all of my jobs. So if you want holidays off, you want weekends off, oh yeah, you work a ton of holidays too. So that's pretty much a requirement. If you're not willing to do that, you're probably not gonna last very long in the media industry because that's pretty much something you have to do. I do think it's very hard to, you know, have a relationship or have a family when you are working as a journalist. It's, I think it's pretty tough because your schedule is really unpredictable. I have worked some of the like schedules you can ever imagine. And like the split schedule is really sucky too. Like if you're working Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, day side, and then you're working like at 5.30 a.m. on the weekends, like trying to shift your sleep on those days is just like, it's like hell on earth. My body is permanently messed up from just working all these weird shifts. I cannot fall asleep before like 2 or 3 a.m. And getting up before 10 a.m. is next to impossible for me just because even now I've been out of the business for like three years. I still feel pretty like on a day-to-day -day basis, I still feel kind of messed up and like kind of zombie-like a lot of the time. And when I was actually working in news, I felt, especially when I had like the really bad schedules, you just feel like a zombie a hundred percent of the time. And that's not good for your health and that's not good for your mental sanity at all. But that is a reality of working in TV news. And let's talk about burnout because that is a very real problem as well. I have gotten to interact and talk with and know a lot of people who work in TV stations or have worked in TV stations. And if I had to estimate, I would say about 85 to 90% seem pretty unhappy with their work situation. And I'm not saying that they don't love what they do because I'm sure they have a passion for it and they, like the work itself is not really the problem. I think a lot of the problem is just the way they're treated in the newsroom environment by managers, by like the general public. A lot of these on-air people get like really, really nasty emails, phone calls, you know, people yelling stuff at them in public and they're expected to take it like 
a lot of on-air personalities like anchors and reporters, they can get in trouble if they try to say anything back or, you know, talk back to a viewer or some, you know, somebody on social media. And they're always like walking on eggshells about their public persona. I was so glad to get out of the business. I have zero regrets about leaving. In fact, just knowing what I do now, if I could have gotten out earlier, I, I would have. And I, I think a lot of the people I know, I do think there are some people who work in TV news who kind of feel trapped. They're making enough money, like, and they, they have like a, you know, they're kind of like mid-level as far as their experience. And they don't really want to leave their job because it might be hard to find a similar paying job and they don't really want to start over. Also, maybe they're relying on the health insurance. I think a high percentage of current TV news employees, if presented an equal or better opportunity in a different field with a better like work life, like maybe like a Monday through Friday schedule. I think most of them would take it given that opportunity. And a lot of people I know have gotten out of the business. They couldn't take it anymore. I've known people who've had like full on breakdowns. There's just a, it's a very high anxiety and high stress job. And I really do think that a lot of the people who work in it, you know, at a certain point, you just, you just reach a breaking point and you can't do it anymore. For the people that, you know, want to escape TV news, I don't blame them. I was one of them. It's a very tough business to have longevity in and all also still keep your sanity. And I've noticed like over time, this happened to me, but I kind of became just more and more of like an angry person. And that's something I really did not like about myself while I was still working in TV news. And I've seen that happen to others as well, where you could take like the most easygoing, you know, chill person, stick them in a TV newsroom for two years, and then they come out the other side, like super pessimistic, deeply unhappy, and very depressed. That's something that does happen in the industry. And I don't think there was a lot of people talking about that, but you know, that's, that's the reality. I'm sure you're aware of it, but the media industry has problems. And I want to refer you to a video my friend Allison did just kind of detailing all the turmoil from a business sense in the journalism, TV news, legacy media industry. She's done some really great reporting on that topic. So I'm going to link her video here and down below in the description box, check it out. There is a lot of uncertainty about the future of TV newsrooms. And I think there's a lot of reasons why that is. People just aren't watching as much TV. And the viewers, I can, I can say this just from interacting with a lot of viewers, viewers of local news in particular tend to be older people. Most of the calls we got were from people who were clearly like boomers or older. And those people, again, the news viewership is not skewing younger. You don't get a ton of 20 somethings, you know, tuning in at 11. And I think that's certainly going to hurt the business side and also lead to deep cuts and just a lot of, a lot of change in the business overall. I see that coming, you know, five, 10 years from now. What happened to radio is certainly going to happen to TV unless the TV industry makes some very drastic changes like pivoting heavily to digital. I do think certain media outlets are on the right track as far as shifting to digital, but a lot of them are not. And that's kind of what I'm wondering is, will they figure it out, be flexible and adapt, or will this whole business just die? I don't know. I do think that a lot of the appeal for platforms like YouTube is that the people are relatable. Like, you know, I'm not wearing a suit and trying to talk to you like all news anchor, you know, I'm just chilling in, in this room here. And I think people, especially the younger audience really wants that. And they don't want somebody in a suit talking to them all formal and giving them the weather. So I think in order to make some changes, the industry really needs to, first of all, like the format of the newscast and also focus on, you know, topics that that younger people care about, first of all. And also again, like this like 10 second soundbite thing, what's really hot on right now is like podcasts and long form interviews, you know, just things like letting there be more context and, and just more of like a raw and edited feel. I think that would work better for the TV news business. And the thing with digital is just that TV stations are just such a small fish in a huge ocean. You know, back in the day, their competitors were like, you know, the Fox station, you know, the NBC station across town. Now their competition is pretty much all social media platforms, uh, streaming sites, other websites. Let's face it, people have endless options for consuming news and information that's not just waiting until six o'clock to watch the nightly news. They can get their news all day on Facebook. They can go to a website. They can check out any one of a number of YouTube personalities and get the same information on their time. So I do think that TV stations could cater a lot more to just the actual habits of 
potential viewers, then just go with the same tired format. I mean, let's be honest, the newscast is, is outdated. And if that doesn't change and they don't really shift away from that, I don't know what's gonna happen. But for real, check out my friend Allison's video. She has a lot of great insight on her channel. She talks a lot about her experience as an ex-reporter, so I highly recommend them. Okay, so let's get to the big question. Do I think you should get into TV news as a journalist now? I would say no, but let me explain. And also, I'm not saying that you shouldn't become a journalist, period. I'm just saying that legacy media is probably not the way to go. I don't regret getting into the business in 2004. In hindsight, I probably would have left the business earlier and I really wish I had started YouTube much, much earlier. I think I would have been farther ahead in life. Let's just say that. If I was 22 now, I would not be remotely interested in working at a local TV station or even at a network as far as traditional media. I would tell people like if you're in college and you're majoring in broadcast journalism, maybe intern at a station or a network, but also just know that your experience as an intern is gonna be a lot different than if you actually worked there. Everywhere I've worked, employees wanted the interns to have like a good and fun experience, but the intern didn't really have to experience like the daily grind that the rest of us did. So just know that they're gonna treat you a lot better as an intern than they will when you're an actual employee. So just know that that's kind of a facade and you should know that if you're actually working at a place, it's gonna be a lot different than when you're just, you know, getting college credit and doing all the fun stuff. If I was in your shoes now, I would look at more alternative or new media outlets. And I would say that because I think they have a better chance for survival in the long run. There are a lot of these popping up. There's a lot of even huge YouTube, you know, networks going up. There's like Philip DeFranco and some of these big YouTube channels hire. If you can get in with a, like if you could get a job working for a large YouTube channel, I would do that before I would even remotely consider trying to get a job in a local newsroom. You also have to consider like, why are you trying to work in a local newsroom or even a network when very few people are watching TV? You're not gonna have as much of an impact because nobody's freaking watching you know, the show or you at your live shot at, you know, the single car accident, but you, you could have a much greater potential impact working for an outlet that has reach. Look at a lot of alternative platforms rather than just your, your typical standard ABC, NBC, whatever station. And I would also say if you're in college now and you want to be a storyteller, you want to be a journalist and you don't have a YouTube channel, like what are, what are you doing? Like, I don't understand that. Like I've talked to some other journalism students and I'm like, do you have a YouTube channel? They're like, no, but maybe I'll start one. I'm like, yeah, you should have started one like three years ago or something. Because I think it's becoming more and more valuable for companies to look at the social media brand you've built on your own. There is a reporter, Clancy Burke, who has a very successful YouTube channel. And I have no doubt that that really clinched her getting a news job. So even if you do want to get for some, for whatever reason, you want to still go into TV news. If you have like a hundred thousand YouTube subscribers, the station is going to be like, wow, she really has a big fan base already. And you're going to look a lot better over those other candidates. But I don't understand why in 2020, you want to make videos, stories, and do journalism, and you're not doing it on your own time. Like that's, like, that's a huge miss there. As I've gotten older and as I've experienced more, and, you know, social media wasn't around really when I graduated college. There's so much opportunity with creating something that you own and control, and that's something that can never be taken away from you. So I don't think you necessarily have to major in broadcast journalism or communications. I was a communications major, and if I could do things over again, well, if I was 18 now, I probably wouldn't go to college, just saying, especially not if you have to take out student loans. If I had the knowledge I do now and I was 18, I would make much different, many different decisions than what I actually did. But I think obviously there are certain industries like medicine, you know, studying law, things like that, where obviously having a formal education is required. But I mean, look at all, all these like very successful YouTube filmmakers who kind of like dropped out of film school or didn't go to college. I think they're in 2020, there's so much, so much opportunity to create your own life, your own business and do something on your own that I don't know if I see college as being necessary for you to do that. Like if you have the skills, there's gonna be a market for that. There's nothing wrong with college, I will say that. But if you have to go deeply into debt for it, I would say you really need to think hard about that because you're not gonna make that much money in, in TV news. In fact, the job, like my 
$20,000 a year job, that station's probably still paying about the same and it's 15 years later. So they haven't even, like TV stations don't even raise their salary rates or pay rates for inflation. So what does that tell you? In college, I, I don't know if it has a positive ROI, especially if you wanna, if you just wanna make videos, make videos, but you don't need to wait for someone to hire you. You can, you that's something you can do on your own for very little money and you don't have to drop six figures for student loans that are gonna take you 20 years to pay back. And believe me, I know as someone who has had student loans. I would also say if you are in college though, major in something more practical, major in accounting, major in, you know, something where if you don't end up becoming a journalist or you change your mind or you end up getting out of the business, you have more options for other jobs. I could still be a, a TV reporter or a TV producer with an accounting degree, but you can't really be an accountant with a broadcast journalism degree. If you want a double major, I think that's great. Like if you can, double major. Double major in broadcast journalism, but have your other major be something very practical. And I think that's something that, that would save a lot of people who've gotten into TV news because a lot of folks I've known have wanted to transition into other jobs, but it can be kind of hard to transition into another industry when you have no experience in it. And I know people are like, well, wouldn't your media industry be so valuable to other industries? In some instances, yes, but I can tell you I've applied for a lot of PR jobs and I wasn't even considered because I had no PR experience, which makes sense, right? And, and that's one industry that a lot of ex-journalists end up doing is they end up doing media relations or public relations. But a lot of folks who end up going, getting out of news to do that end up having to take like an entry level position because they have no experience. If you're gonna do that, why not just get into PR in the first place and skip the newsroom? I mean, you could, you could intern at a TV station and that would give you something on your resume to say, yeah, I worked in a newsroom, but you know, why spend 15 years of your life making peanuts in TV news just to switch to another industry? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. That's something that, I, you know, I wish I would have known more and been more mindful of when I was in college because I would have made many different choices with my areas of study. If you are a broadcast journalism major now, again, you know, no shame in that, but I'm just telling you, there is probably a good chance at some point you're gonna wanna do something else just based on everyone I know and just what I see. A lot of people who work in TV newsrooms end up doing another type of career you know, five, 10, 15 years from then. And, and you want as many options as you can. So I would say, you know, major in something, major in finance, major in accounting, take classes in journalism, you know, and, and get some experience, try to intern, you know, at a newsroom, but you don't put all your eggs in one basket. And, you know, the broadcast journalism major can be, can be pretty limiting for other types of jobs. So just telling you that. So that's my advice to aspiring journalists. So I know I have talked a lot, but you know, I hope this sheds some light on what it's really like to work in the media industry. And I do get hit up occasionally, so I thought I would just chat about it. I could talk literally forever, but if you have your own newsroom experiences or if you have any like kind of general questions, uh, leave them below in the comments. And also let me know, like, are there any other types of videos you'd want me to make about working in, in the TV business? You know, I might consider them. So let me know, but I'm Jen. I'll see you guys again next time.